Welcome back. Well, we're now on problem number 11. 11. And this says, the circle above has center O and diameter AB. And it's a dotted line in the book, but I made it a solid green line. The two semicircles have diameters OA, so this is one semicircle, and this is its diameter, OA. And then OB, this is the other semicircle, and it's OB. If the circumference of the circle is 36 pi, so circumference of the circle, of the big circle, I'll, and actually I'll do it in yellow, which is the color of, of kind of the, the perimeter, or the circumference of that circle. So they're saying the circumference is 36 pi. What is the length of the curved path from A, B to O? So they want to figure out the length of essentially this brown path. And so before we, we break into the math, just how can we think about this? Well, we have a big circle, and we know its circumference. So if we know its circumference, we could figure out its radius or its diameter, right? Because uh, you know the formula, circumference is equal to 2 pi r, right? So if we know the circumference of this big circle, we can actually figure out its radius by using this formula. And the radius of the big circle, which would be, let's say, OA or OB, they're both radiuses of the big circle, then those are the diameter of each of these each of these half circles or each of these semicircles, right? So if we know that this if we know this diameter, we could, you know, take half of it and reuse this formula or or say that circumference is two is is pi times the diameter. We could do either one. And we could figure out if if we let's say we know let's say we know this radius, then we could figure out this then we could figure out the circumference of this larger circle. And I'll I'll actually make the claim that the circumference of this larger circle is the same as the circumference of this half circle plus this half circle. I think you know why. You can just if you just shifted this up, then you would get the other half of this circle, right? The other way you could have done it is you figure out the circumference of this circle, divide by two to get this. Take the circumference of this circle, divide by two to get this, and then add them. But you'll get the same thing as just the circumference of this circle. So let's do the problem. So circumference is equal to two pi r. We know the circumference of the larger circle is 36 pi. So let's see, 36 pi, whoops, 36 pi is equal to 2 pi r. Divide both sides by 2 pi, and I'll switch the sides too. So you get r is equal to 36 pi over 2 pi. Right? I just divide both sides by 2 pi. Pi's cancel out. 36 divided by 2 is equal to 18. And so what's 18? 18 is this is this length right here. 18. Right? Is this length. We just figured out that's the radius of the larger circle. And now we could use this, which is the diameter of the smaller circle, to figure out its circumference using the same formula. And now I'm going to use brown for this this circumference. So circumference is equal to 2 pi r. And that's the same thing as because 2 times the radius is the diameter, right? So that equals pi times the diameter. We know what the diameter is. The diameter is 18, right? So we could say circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. Diameter is 18. Or if we rearrange that, that's 18 pi. And we're done. Because what we just figured out is the circumference of this larger circle. We could take it, we could divide it by 2 and figure out, well, this is. We could say that this is 9 pi right here. Just this piece. This piece is 9 pi. And if we did the same math here on this piece, we would also get 9 pi. But that that's also adds up to 18 pi. Hopefully you understand what I'm saying. Let's move on to the next problem. Image, clear image, Im invert colors. All right. So in the table above, this is our classic x, f of x table, f of x. When x is 0, f of x is a. When x is 1, f of x is 24. When x is 2, f of x is b. And it says the table above shows some values of the functions of f. f is a linear function. So what does a linear function mean? Linear means it's a line, right? And that also means that the slope is constant. If you haven't gotten, uh, well, if you haven't gotten past algebra 1, you probably haven't seen functions with non-constant slopes, but like for example, quadratics don't have constant slopes. But linear means that the slope is constant. Right? That's that's the one conclusion you can make from that statement. 
And then they want to know what is the value of a plus b. a plus b is what? So the only thing we know is this table, and we know that it's linear. And linear means that the slope is constant. So the slope is constant. So let's see what we can figure out the slope. So that means the slope from, from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 1 is the same as the slope from x is equal to 1 to x is equal to 2. So what's the slope if we use these two terms? Slope is change in, well, change in f of x over change in x, right? So change in, so change in, I mean, it's change in y over change in x, right? We could, we could call this y instead. So change in y, we take the end, let's see, 24 minus a. And you might want to review the slope video if you forgot this. 24 minus a over the change in x is 1 minus 0. Well, that's just 1. So that equals 24 minus a, right? And what's the, what's the slope from these points? Because we know it's constant. We know the slope from between these two points is going to be the same as the slope between these two points. Well, we do the same thing. We take the end points, change in y. So it's b minus 24 over change in x, 2 minus 1. So that equals, well, this is just 1. So that equals b minus 24. So this is the slope between the second two points, and this is the slope between the first two points. And since we know it's linear, since we know this is a linear equation, we can say, well, they must be equal to each other. So let's see if that gets us to where we want to go. So we know that 24 minus a is equal to b minus 24, right? Let's see. Let Let's subtract, let's add 24 to both sides. You get 48 minus a is equal to b, right? I just added 24 to both sides. And if we add a to both sides, I see the end point. 48 is equal to a plus b. And that is choice c. Let us move on. And remember, all we did, we used this information, and we used the fact that slope is constant. So the only thing that you would have had to know ahead of time is the equation of, a, of, a, of the slope, and that's just change in y over change in x, and that linear means constant slope. Image, clear image, invert colors. All right, so they write a little sequence up here. This is, let's see, number 13. It's 3, 5, negative 5. They say the first term in the sequence of the numbers shown is 3. That's obvious. They'd show that. Each even number term is 2 more than the previous term. So right, from we go from 3 to 5, that was 2 more, right? Because this, this is the second term, so it's an even number term. So this is 2 more. And each odd number of term after the first is minus 1 times the previous. So right, minus 1, minus 1 times this term is minus 5. So that's what they're saying. For example, the second term is 3 plus 2, right? And the third term is minus 1 times 5. What is the 55th term of the sequence? So on the SAT, whenever you know, they ask you some crazy term, like the 100th term or the 55th term, that's a huge signal that, that this sequence is probably going to repeat itself, and you just have to figure out the pattern. And then once you know that pattern, I'll show you how to figure out the 500th term if you have to. So let's, let's just, with any sequence, the best thing to do is just write out a bunch of terms. So we start at 3, we add 2, we get 5, we multiply by negative 1. Right, this is plus 2. Then we multiply by negative 1 times negative 1. We get minus 5. Then we want to add 2. So 2 times 2 times negative 5 is, I oh don't know, we're adding 2, right? 2 plus negative 5 is minus 3. I think I'm already seeing a pattern here. Two. And then we have to multiply that times minus 1 times minus 1. That's not x minus 1. This is times minus 1. So minus 1 times 3. I know we're all used to x now. So minus 1 times 3. I should do minus 1 times instead. Minus 1 times 3. Well, that's 3. And then we add 2 to it, plus 2. We get 5. And it's interesting. Then it's going to start repeating. Minus 1 is minus 5. So let's see what the, what the repetition looks like. The first term is 3. The second term is 5. The third term is minus 5. The fourth term is is minus three. The fifth term is three again. Sixth term is five, seventh, and so on. Oh, I'm almost out of time. I'll continue.